We're not going to read this memorandum without this imperialist and murderers come outside. And if they don't come outside, we're not going to live here until they come outside. So they must stop wasting our time. We're not here to play games here. If they think they were part of the nonsense they've been doing in West Africa, it stops here. We're not West Africa. And we're not going to allow that nonsense. We come here peacefully. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Chumambe. I hope you are all well by the grace of God. This is a short uh, news from South Africa. The EFF leader has asked France embassy to move. Why he was saying that, that South Africa is not West Africa, that they will come and mess around and go. And the game is over. Um, I was thinking, this is the voice that we need. The whole Africa needs, I mean, some qualities in this man, the way he's bold and he tells us as it is. So he went to read a Murado to them. Please watch the video and let me come back. And we want the France embassy to act peacefully and not provoke us. So they must come outside and receive the memorandum. Otherwise, we are not going to start. Otherwise, we are not going to live here. And by not living here, they will not live here. We are going to divide ourselves. Others will go and occupy the main road there. And others will occupy the gate of France Embassy. So stop wasting time. The French white supremacists are not going to dictate to us on how we must protest here in South Africa. No one is going to fight you. No one is going to beat you. You have killed a lot of people in Africa. Why are you scared today to come out and face Africans? So he, you heard him what he was saying about uh, France. He said a lot of things, how they have murdered a lot of our people, how they are messing around in Africa. And they had enough and he want them to leave. But I don't know whether they will leave or not because he's, remember, he's um, opposition leader. Excuse my voice. He's opposition leader. He's not the president of the country of South Africa. So I don't know whether they will listen to him or not. We shouldn't waste each other's time, please. We are here to present the memorandum and we will leave. But they will have to come outside. Don't be scared. You are in a peaceful country. We are very peaceful. Don't be cowards. Come outside. We have no problem. We are not going anywhere. We are very patient. Very. We will sleep together here today. I will read the memorandum from there. We will call upon the embassy's representative to come and receive the memorandum. The Economic Freedom Fighters condemns all manifestations of colonialism and neocolonialism in the entire African continent. We, as a generation of freedom fighters, reject and condemn the fact that decades after the declaration of so-called independence of former colonized territories, colonizers continue to maintain a colonial and neo-colonial relationship with African countries which are supposed to be free from colonial control. The British colonizers, the Portuguese colonizers, the Belgian colonizers, the Spanish colonizers, and all the French colonizers continue to brutally exploit, oppress, and micromanage all countries they colonized many decades ago. French colonialism in the African continent continues to be the most brutal, cruel, and devilish form of colonialism in the African continent. When countries that were under French colonial rule declared political independence, 
the government of France destroyed and damaged all the infrastructure and the systems that were developed through African resources and labor power because they wanted to retain total control of all the former colonies. The French colonial governments destroyed everything they were unable to loot back to their country after independence. The French colonialists banned food, killed cows, and destroyed buildings and books. The former colonies of the French regime, such as Gabon, Mali, Niger, Senegal, Benin, Togo, Burkina Faso, Congo Brazzaville, Ivory Coast, Chad, Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, and Guinea-Bissau continue to use the franc currency and their monetary policy are dictated by the French Central Bank. France continue to make... The EFF leader, what is doing, whether it will be successful or not, but I'll be watching it closely. He wants France to leave. I think what is going on in West Africa is just upsetting him, like, you know. So he wants them to leave, but does he have the power? It's like he wants to sack them. Um, he's, he was very serious about it as well. What do you think? Do you think he has power to do that? I, I don't know about that. Um, having said that, I was thinking whether this school is calm or not, because this uh, leader, the military leader, is the same family as Ali Bongo. And also, there's no changes in the system at all, because he, like he opened the borders, everything is business as usual. The only difference is Ali Bongo is in his house enjoying his comfortable meals, whereby he's ruling. So I don't know. I'm, for me, since I brought that news, the, my mind is spinning around, be following all that news, and I'm thinking, is it a scam on the... <clears throat> excuse me. Is it a scam on the Gabonese people? Because if they really want a change, then they have to move from... the. Uh, uh, is that the only family who has intelligent people in the country? There should be a lot of people. But maybe because he's weak and he has won and everyone thinks that winning it was not genuine win. And maybe they don't want the opposition. Excuse me, the win is, you know, but it's only this place I can do this video in this house. So bear with me. Um... Like, they don't want the opposition to take control. To me, this is what I'm thinking. I don't know about you. But I'm thinking they don't want the opposition to take control. And that's why they have to do it themselves. Maybe France hand is involved so that they will not touch anything. Everything will be the same. Not like the Niger, Burkina Faso, and the rest. Plus, the world is, the world is a bit cold about it. I will show you a video about what the, uh, the European Union is planning to do to Niger. I don't know whether it has happened now or not. But they were planning something, the sanctions and the rest, whereby with Gabon, everything is quiet. Um, I'm so not sure. Sanctions against Niger after military forces ousted President Bazoum last month, who was elected two years ago. Defense and foreign ministers of the bloc discussed various possibilities at an informal summit in Toledo, Spain. We are moving forward for an autonomous sanctions regime to take measures against the Putschist. Work has already started. Niger is just the latest of a number of African countries. Okay, let's move on to Congo. What is going on in Congo that makes one of my brothers uh, cry. I saw this uh, YouTuber, one of our brothers crying. I said, what is going on? Let me check the video. Then I saw that um, they also in Congo, they want the UN to leave. I think this thing has been going on for a long time. They want them to leave, but they don't want to leave. You know why? You know why they don't want to leave? It's not that they are protecting. It's in the name of protecting, but they are not protecting them. Because if they are not, they are protecting them, excuse me, they will not be 
you know, deleting them. I, I'm not allowed to use those words anymore. So they will not be deleting them, but they are deleting them. And that's why they want them to leave. About 48 people, 43 or 48 people has died because of peaceful demonstration that turned out to be deadly. So instead of them protecting their own, instead of them protecting the Congolese people, they rather the Congolese soldiers or the police rather were shooting their own people just to prevent them getting to the UN yard, which is very sad. That makes my brother cry. And when I watch it, to be honest, I share tears as well. You know who is the problem? You know who is killing our people? You know it, but you ain't doing nothing. If you will take your life to save the lives of 48 people, you should be willing to die to save the lives of the people. Why are you scared of these guys? Why are you scared of United Nations? Why are you, why are you scared of the backwash? Why are you scared that you'll be assassinated? How many leaders were assassinated in Africa? If you're not willing to sacrifice yourself, you don't deserve to be a leader of Africa. You must be willing to die for your people. That's a true leadership. You think leadership is easy? You think leadership is accumulating your money for yourself? Do you think you're there to save yourself? Do you think, do you think you being alive, if you being alive, it costs a lot of millions of people lives, then you, you don't deserve to be alive. We are extremely alarmed that at least 43 people were killed, including a policeman, and 56 injured during demonstrations on Wednesday in Goma in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. We have received information indicating that the death toll may be higher. The demonstrations were organized against the United Nations Stabilization Mission in the DR Congo, MONUSCO, and regional force of the uh, East African community, other UN agencies, and international non-governmental organizations. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, calls on the authorities to ensure that future law enforcement actions in the context of the policing of public assemblies fully adhere to international human rights norms and standards. What is going on in Africa? Is it only Africa that needs protection that, you know, they are everywhere, they, every territory they are there. In the name of protection, and protection is not working. You know, the people are getting poor and poorer. So how long will they keep feeding Africa? How long? So I don't know. And let's keep like praying for our Congo people, the Mali the Gabonese and the Burkina Faso, Niger especially, who stood their ground. And they are paying for it, they are suffering, but we have to keep praying for them because we need brave leaders to say enough is enough. It is too much. Enough is enough. They always come. I was watching climate change and all they were saying that we are not here just for the resources alone. We are here also to help you to be partners. And what partners? There's never partners, you know? Like um, Wudimaya said, Africa, we don't have genuine friends. Everyone that will come and shake hand with us, that they want to partnership with us or friends, they are there for their own interests. And that's the fact, that's the truth. They are there for their own interests. And they always get more than what we get in return. And our leaders always keep quiet about it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be with you soon. I'll bring you another video soon. God bless you. If this is your first time, please subscribe, like, share. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,